So Photoshop is where we're going to try to kind of bring this all together, do a bunch of renders, fix things we don't like, and then um, see if we need to go back into ZBrush to change anything and, and re-render stuff, or just make a new version, or whatever it might be. So what I'm doing here is I've, uh, I've rendered out a couple passes with that key shot render. I've got the ambient of occlusion pass and a specular pass. And I've uh, isolated, using the clown pass, I've isolated the skin and I'm just kind of tweaking the color. It's a little saturated for what I wanted. So, since I never actually went in and like sculpted or painted any actual eyes, um, oftentimes I'll just do that in, in post. I'll do that in, in Photoshop. Get a nice shiny material in there and then in here I'll try to start figuring out what the eye design is going to be. Starting with maybe a bit of a bright color, and knocking it back, and thinking about how the light might pool inside of the eye. You know, always thinking, even though this is 2D, I'm still thinking of it as a layered thing. There's a outer shell catching light, and then there's an inner uh, kind of bowl shape that's pooling the light. And as you're working, just like when you're sculpting, you'll see that I'm bouncing around from area to area. As I desaturated some of it, it's that, that kind of fleshy red pink went away. So purple eyes are kind of interesting, but maybe we try a different color. Hue saturation. Again, why I like doing it in post is this gives me a lot of freedom to explore. Um, you know, maybe take Photoshop uh, in some animal eyes or tweak them or you know, or human eyes. Whatever we wanted to do, we could we could really experiment in here. I liked the idea that we had played with before of him having some sort of tattoo or face paint. Um, I don't want to commit to that when I'm in, in, in the 3D zone because if it's not liked, if it doesn't work the way I think it works or the client doesn't like it, then I'm stuck and I've got this thing on there that uh, I have to re-render. So by just doing it this way, I can do a lot of options very quick. Or maybe this is something that's in the design brief that he has some form of facial um, decoration. And when it's vague like that, you don't want to go in there and spend all this time making a perfect thing in 3D and then find out, oh, I don't like the color red. Well, got to re-render it. So this way you can just go in and do a lot of options very quickly. And since I didn't spend a lot of time on the hands, uh, I'm just touching them up a little bit. I was not intending to have them so front-focused, so... You know, so long as they look okay, uh, it should be fine. And anywhere that the detail of the sculpt was lost, or if there's a design beat that just doesn't read quite right, I'm just going to paint over it or simplify it. Sometimes in 3D, uh, with rendering, things get very complicated very fast, and it's hard to group things together. Um, some decaling, just thought it would be interesting to have some sort of writing on there to show that there's some sort of language that's not something we're familiar with. In terms of uh, like what overlay or screen or color judge I'm going to do, I'm going to play with it a little bit to see what what seems to work the best for me. Sometimes it'll just be a normal one that I have uh, knocked back a little bit so you can read through it. A little bit more of the controlled scratches and wear and tear. We've got a pretty good pass in, in uh, ZBrush, but now it's time to add a little bit more storytelling elements that way. And since I made that strange little alien language thing. I can just grab pieces of it, rotate it, and add a little more quickly. Uh, early on when we did the costume, I had sketched out kind of this tribal-y tattoo thing. Just wanted to throw it on there again, see how that looks. I'm trying to think of how it would go along with his muscles. And try not to be too um, earthy with it, although it's pretty hard because they go every direction you can imagine. But still recognizable. I'm actually looking at some reference of uh, different cultures' tattoos and playing with that. So I have everything on layers, so I can turn them off, on, erase away, I can mask things. Staying kind of far zoomed out rather than going in and worrying too much about the detail. Try that facial idea again, a little more controlled this time. 
just thinner, a little more high tech looking, it could work. Curves to angles, kind of like the design has in his costume, and the, even his anatomy kind of has some of that. Top one's kind of going with the flow of the anatomy, the bottom one's kind of going against it, and then maybe the center line. This is all experimentation. I'm thinking maybe I have to go really bold with it. And as I'm working, I could be saving out every version you see here or making a new layer comp for all of this. And just have a lot of options. Kind of like everything going to the mouth a little bit. It seems to, his, his design kind of leans that way. So hit it with a little dark kind of 90% uh, gray and now I'm hitting it with some red in the, in the middle of that. Thought that might look cool if I brighten up and uh, lighten his skin a bit. So again, one of the beauties of working in um, in the way that we do is that I don't just have that one image to show. I've got multiple angles. I've got multiple designs. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, a close-up. And when I do this, I'm going to be thinking about what I did on the last version and either adding it to it or, if I see something new, changing it. It can be nice if you have a far-away shot and a close-up shot and maybe a side shot to kind of sell the idea of the character. And a lot of times, once I get to this stage, I start noticing the things that really need to be changed. So I've adjusted the skin to make it brighter like we had before. And you might notice that this specular is a lot a lot hotter than the other one. We're going to talk about that uh, when we get to the next, next version, uh, how I go about making that. Just playing with the levels on it and uh, hitting it with the screen. I don't want it to be too shiny, so I'll mask this out and kind of erase away some stuff. And uh, here I've actually put it on a multiply layer, thinking maybe there's some sort of soot or something on him. So since I didn't have eyes, I just simply have gone in there and started painting some eyes. And I'm going to take you through that process in a minute, but this is the round one. So I want it to be a little rougher. Just looking in here to see what, what works well and what doesn't work well. And I, early on I had that hair idea going on, so I think I'm um, just trying to see if some wispy hair might be interesting on him. I kind of think you would never notice until you zoom way in, but it can add a little realism. And I'm just sampling the colors. Uh, I thought scarring or something like that might be cool, kind of like we looked at uh, Logan from before. So I'm sampling colors I already have on him. And then I knock it back a bit and try to find some places where this might look good. It might be a little too cliched to put scars all over him, you know, kind of. It's that the obvious thing, the, the obvious one to do, the thing that's overused in my opinion is the over the eye kind of scar with the dead eye or something like that. But it's overused for a reason because it does work, it's effective, it looks cool. But at the same time, it's kind of counterintuitive when you think, well, if he's so cool, why, why does he have a, he's missing an eye, that's got to be, make his job harder, doesn't it? But maybe it doesn't, maybe that's his, maybe it's a cybernetic implant or something. And then I'm just thinking, well, maybe instead of being so symmetrical, maybe he's got one of these things is broken and kind of scarred over. And if I like this idea, I can always take it into ZBrush, do it, and re-render this whole guy. We've saved our cameras and our pose and everything, so it's easy enough to go back in and change it. Close up, I'm starting to experiment with the idea of that tattoo, that uh, or face paint. This is a little more of a tattoo. It does add something to him. I don't necessarily love it yet, but the idea is something I want to keep experimenting with. I think over the mouth, the scar could be kind of interesting. And some area that just didn't spend enough time on the sculpt, just fixing up. So 
as I'm working on this guy, I'm noticing a few things that I don't necessarily love. And I'm going to take um, these notes that I've learned by rendering him, by, uh, by really playing in this world. Right now I'm just adding in some veining. This is real subtle stuff, but it adds maybe a little something to, to him. And grouping some areas, getting rid of some of the, the strange breakup, and also making some of the design detail in his costume read a little bit better. Little striation lines on that le dark leather material. Warp tool is our best friend when we're doing this kind of thing because we want it to flow with his um, anatomy. And then lastly, I'll throw some curves, some saturation, see what's looking right, and then maybe a little gradient to, uh, to bring focus to the face. Just taking a look overall, if anything needs to be tweaked. But for this stage, this is probably about where we need to be. A little extra drama by putting in a um, kind of a bit of a light kind of pouring through from behind him from those skylights. But I don't want it to take over his face, so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a selection of him, uh, shrinking it down, and softening the heck out of it, and putting a mask on there graying it out a little bit, blurring it, just so it bleeds through just a pinch. Maybe a little color addition will, will make him integrate a little better or pop out a little bit better. That's what you're always looking to do. You don't want things to feel homogenized or feel a little bit more um, distinctly different. So for this one, it's kind of an outdoor shot. Uh, I thought I should show you another thing that I do often is after I've done this stage, I might look at it and realize, you know, I dropped off that idea that I kept going back to with that, that mustache thing. Um, let's just try it. Let's just see how it works on one of the renders. Because we have so much information in that render. We have all the color. We have the, the way that the light kind of wraps around it. So it's pretty easy to sample those areas and get something fairly believable. I even started thinking about some detailing in here that um, I hadn't experimented with. A little shadow effect. And I do still think that adds something to him. Makes him a little more unique. You might notice I've treated the eyes different in every image, and I'm kind of doing that on purpose. I want to see where I want to take this. Um, this pose wasn't intended to be used this way, so I may liquefy or grab a chunk, and I thought it'd be nice, since he's looking off in the distance, to, um, to grab that, that cape area. And since I've got blur happening on there, it's not really helping me here. Um, I'm gonna mask it off real quick and just warp this thing so it looks like it's kind of blowing in the wind a little bit and then using the mask and just paint, painting away his elbow. So it's wrapping around his arm, being snagged, and then blowing away some holes in it to make it more interesting. We could spend a lot of time going through this and uh, trying to match things up and make it just right. But at this stage, again, um, just trying to give another option. So this one's not too far off from what the other ones were, but I, you might notice I, I removed the bandolier to expose the chest armor a little bit more. And what's nice about an image like this is it does show his costuming a lot more than the other images. Still feel like you might need something, so I thought, what if he had a... Uh, the top knot or something, but it just doesn't doesn't feel very very right. Enhancing that kind of overlay there, where the, the different forms kind of meet together. That could be a color variation, or that could be actual form. 
been thinking about maybe some more distinct wrinkle lines or breakup lines. Or maybe instead of a tattoo, he's got scars. He's, he's got some battle weary stuff going on there. Fixing up any areas that the model kind of fell apart in, too. This can happen when you do a render, you'll realize, oh no, his arm is poking through. So here's where we were. Kind of talking, showing all these different stages. So now this is a lot of information for a uh, potential design. Um, add a little bit of a, a little more dramatic lighting, just kind of bleeding through onto him. Again, integrating him into his his lack of environment. But the environment is not the focus at this stage. This is more of a mood and who he is. So this is after spending a little bit more time on that one. I came up with some face paint that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, broke up his cape area a little bit more, some color variation, you know, spent a little more time, not, not a lot, probably like 15 minutes or something like that, but in the interest of moving forward. And match the close-up, so he's a little more similar. I like the idea of this thing being broken up a little bit more, so what we're going to do is actually, uh, I took this back into ZBrush, and things I didn't like on this were I, I noticed his neck felt small all of a sudden, even though it's not, just because that collar got so long, and proportionally I didn't like where certain things landed. And same thing here, I just applied the, uh, the same treatment. And again, kind of looking at that, that little overlapped area. Took it back into ZBrush and did some new renders. So just kind of knock back some of the specularity on him. And by doing that, you can see I could fill that mask with gray and black, and then I could just pull a little white in there to make things like the lips pop out or under the eyes. Uh, use that ambient occlusion pass to bring some detail out and help integrate. Um, put a little color on there just to, just for the interest really, it's probably too much. But that's why I duplicated it um, and I take it off the body a little. Now I'm just trying to make, um, make certain areas separate and read a little bit nicer adding in that little hair stuff but like this tusk thing he didn't the mustache thing didn't quite read out as well as i would like so i'm just gonna isolate it a little bit paint in a little reflection paint in a little shadow and any areas where my sculpting got sloppy i'm just going to use kind of a messy brush and go in and bring out detail or blend together detail i brought in that same uh same graphic design element I was using before, and it's going to warp it into place for this new angle. Things are a little different, so I need to make it work. Same with this side. Try to pay attention to how it would warp on the actual surface. Knocking it back a little bit. Just looking for anything that needs uh, to be brought out, like that collar edge, just kind of a little messy. Those little separation parts got a little lost. A little color break up here and there. And those are all kind of working okay. Better than where we were before, at least in where I'm at. So I want to do a side shot too. Um, because he has a strange head shape, you could almost expect it to be a normal round skull, but an angle like this really helps read that something's different. So a few things here, I want to make sure I match whatever I did on the previous render. So I'm going to grab a, 
grab that graphic design element again. And really only need the one side. And what's fun here is I can see where that actually goes. And from the front view, it's just on the one side. From here, I want to make sure that it's uh, going around the skull, around the face, behind those horns to kind of help it read. That, oh yeah, this is layered, a layered character. He's got a lot of different dimensions as he moves his head. And those, the little kind of mohawky hair thing that I keep sketching on there, I think could be really f more interesting if, when you look at it from the side, it kind of pops out a little bit more as the hair goes down, almost like he's balding. And if these ears are supposed to be hypersensitive things, the, maybe those little filaments in there, those little hairs can start to, to read. Now I could grab the eyes and spend some time doing the side of the eyes, but he's kind of got a dark eye to begin with, so it, it, just hit the reflection a little bit more. And adding some noise to get it away from just the pure render. So maybe some moles. I'm blurring those so that they're not quite so distinct. I'm just using a scatter brush. And again, since I have a uh, camera with depth of field, I need to make sure that I'm paying attention to that. So I kind of liked where I was with those two, and I want to do one last round on this guy. Close up of the head, a little bit of the body. I'm going to throw some photo textures on this one. I didn't, don't think I really used any photo textures last time. And these are from, uh, I want to say Peter Koenig, uh, a brilliant artist who you guys might be aware of. Um, and if you're not, you should look him up. He's really, really talented. Um, he, he did something, I want to say it was a workshop or, or something, where he showed grabbing Google Earth images and making alphas out of them and texture samples, and um, I have used this trick ever since I saw him do it. Uh, but I wish I could say it was my magic trick, but it was one that he gave out to the world, which uh, I thank him for. Speaking of those happy accidents, this kind of stuff, you find all sorts of neat things. You know, throwing symmetry on it, you find something else. You could layer it over the whole thing. I'm going to knock it back pretty far. It's not going to be... It's really just to break up the, the surface. When you do um, these renders, a lot of times they come out real clean. So throwing photo textures on things can quickly make things feel a lot more real. And just like in ZBrush, when we use the alpha textures, now it's a matter of going in and painting out areas, painting, painting in some stuff. Now... I had the idea before for that, where those kind of markings were going to go, but um, I just not quite sold on it. So I wanted to play with this. He's got this very open, kind of interesting structure. I didn't think what we had before really enhanced that. So I want to draw attention to those tentacled mustaches since we've been going back and forth on them so much. Uh, so I, I just kind of, this idea came in my head as I was working on it, and if you remember earlier on, I started playing with some, uh, doing a red character again. But then since we made him so so pale and white, um, a bright color like this really pops off, and you can go in a lot of different directions, but I want him to look threatening to a point, uh, at least at a first glance. So um, I thought red would be a nice, uh, easy to distinguish color to use in that way. But I don't want it to feel too over the top, so now I'm pulling in some purples, greens. I'm just kind of breaking it up, making it a little more natural. The question now is, is this a skin pattern? Is it a paint or a tattoo? Um, you could kind of sell it either way. I think the way I have it now, it looks a little more like it's applied. But if you look at like cephalopods and things with chromatophores, you get this kind of neat breakup on them too in a natural way. So maybe that's something to, to develop further. Maybe that's a color changing area or something. But I do kind of like how it's reading as it is. Uh, so eyes, I've used the clown pass to grab the, the beauty pass, um, uh, this render. And now I've linked a few layers to it and put the specular pass on the very top as a screen layer. What that allows me to do is, is think of it as, as an eye really is in two different shapes. There's a convex uh, 
highlight catcher, and then you have the kind of more concave bowl where the pupil and everything lie. So anything I paint inside of this is, is going to be where the light is being caught. Now I could take the time to model this out and it would look really nice, um, but a lot of times I have fun painting these, so at least at this stage I'll probably stick it here um, in 2D. And then once I get to a very, very final pass, I would, I would maybe make the actual 3D and paint it up uh, eye, eye design. One thing of note is when you're working on characters and creatures and aliens, uh, you might do weeks on just eye designs. What does that pupil look like? What is the color? How does it react to light? Sizes could be changing all the way up, especially VFX. You could be uh, thinking you're done with your character and then all of a sudden you find out, oh no, that needs to be about 25% bigger. At this point, we're just looking for anything that uh, could add more visual interest. We kept the poly paint pretty simple on purpose so that um, in post we're able to do variations. So here I'm just kind of adding a little patterning. I'm sampling the colors and values that we've already rendered so everything feels pretty integrated. And enhancing any and simplifying some areas that maybe don't quite lead the way I'd like them to. Adding a little shadow here and there, a little highlight here or there. Usually enhancing stuff more than adding stuff at this stage. In the previous stages we may actually change things drastically, but this one's pretty pretty refined model, so now we can just pull push and pull the stuff that we've already done. Uh, adding a little grunge to him just to get it out of the, the really CG feel, the rendered out feel, it's too perfect. And really, if I, if I wanted to, I could go in and add more fringing to the, the cloak, a little randomness to the hairs, put some photo textures on there. Speaking of that, I'm gonna go in and add a little break up to his uh, silhouette here. And since I kept playing with that fringed kind of um, mohawk design, I'm gonna see if I can't make it as like a third read, you would see it there. Also, adding a little bit of highlight to things that I want to pop out. And since I have those renders, I can really kind of tell exactly where the angle of the light's coming from and just you know, cheat it as I want. You can get a lot just in one render, and uh, if you take the time, you can probably get almost everything. But I do find that you're probably better served um, getting things like 90% there and then uh, taking the time and in, 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 at the end to kind of push it over the edge. Added the curves on there just to uh, push the highs and lows a little bit, crunch them down, make them, make them read nicer. Still trying to find how, how much to go with that. I just want to give it a once over, keep zooming out, looking at the whole thing, adding um, a little gradient to, to draw focus to the head, and I'm just erasing away the, the areas that I kind of want the eye to go to. This is a study of the, the character's face, so although the costume stuff will, will also be important, um, the key importance here is what his, what his face looks like, how, it's, how he's being presented there. Here I'm doing a really small blur with some grain. This can help kind of integrate everything a little bit. And I'm erasing away that blur on the face. I want that to be pretty sharp. So I'm also running an unsharp mask on it. See, it just pops everything a little more. And from this distance, you almost don't notice it, but when we zoom in, that's where you see it. Uh, use a color dodge on the eyes. Might have gone a little too far with that, but uh, it can, can look nice. And then just with a paintbrush going in and a smudge brush, 
looking for stuff that gets a little sharp or a little, um, a little bit wrong feeling. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the overall image, so I'd be sending this off to the client and hopefully moving the project that much more forward. In closing, I'd like to touch a little bit on the workflow we just showed. I showed it in a very linear fashion, from very rough sketch to sculpt, costuming, renders, final renders and revisions, and then final design. But when you're working, you might not always have that luxury. Sometimes you only have time for a quick sketch, or maybe they just want to see a rough model before you go this far. So being able to be flexible in this process is very important. And even more important is having presentable images at nearly every step of the way. I hope you enjoyed taking this class and that some of the methods were, um, you find useful for your own workflows. I know mine's constantly evolving and I'm always looking for the next trick, but a lot of times the only trick is in doing. So with that being said, I can't wait to see what kind of creatures and characters you all come up with in the future. Thanks again for listening.